All right, gang, welcome back to Death Curse Society. Look around, make sure there's nobody up in your attic. And why the hell would you have a landline phone in your attic? It makes no sense whatsoever. I don't get it. It's time for some stories around the campfire. First up on Stories Around the Campfire, the much-anticipated fan film from Dave McRae and Bruce Dale, It's Me, Billy. It's a fan sequel to Black Christmas from 1974, and it picks up almost 50 years later. The storyline is unaware of the danger that's hunting her. Sam and her two best friends are spending Christmas Eve at her grandmother's old country mansion. Stalked by a sinister evil that's been lurking in the shadows for nearly 50 years, Sam is about to come face to face with her grandmother's chilling Christmas past, the deranged psychopath known as Billy. Now, Ziggy, I know this was one you were really excited for because you, out of the three of us, are probably the biggest fan of the original Black Christmas. So, your first thoughts on It's Me, Billy. Yeah, man. Finally, got to see a proper sequel to Black Christmas. 1974. We ain't fucking around with those other two. We ain't even going to talk about those. They have no connection to this piece. This is a direct sequel to 1974. In my opinion, they nailed it. They do take some liberties with the story, but I think they delivered with it. I think it's cool, and God, I hope we get to see more after this. <laughs> well, it seems like that was the original plan anyway, was to take you to this point where it's just like, okay, now I have to know what else is going to happen. And that's exactly what, that's what you do as a filmmaker. Written and directed by Bruce Dale and Dave McRae, two longtime childhood friends, uh, living up in Canada, they have a love for the original Black Christmas because of its Canadian roots. And man, I tell you what, the first thing that caught me was that first drone shot. Colonel, did that knock you off your off your chair when you saw that? Dude, dude I'm telling you, that was a beautiful fucking drone shot. All right. But the odd news is this is not the best thing for me to say about this fan film. Excellent. I was hoping everybody so. knows I am not a fan of the original Black Christmas. I appreciate what is done for the horror world and bringing me the slashers, which is probably my favorite genre. But man, this one was really fucking good. 42 minutes boom, on my phone. I got what he was saying. There are some scenes where I just could not really make out what's going on. Very small, but I knew that was going to be an issue on the fucking phone. We've been, we were warned before it debuted. You know, the acting was fantastic. It was shot beautifully. Like, this looked like a studio film. I mean, I got to put up there with Never Hike Alone, Never Hike in the Snow. Like, I got Never Hike Alone in the Snow. You got It's Me, Billy. Only because I'm a fan of the Friday the 13th franchise, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that gives it the edge. But, dude, this is really fucking good. This was a good 42 minutes spent. I had super high expectations for this film. Mostly because... Dave McRae is one of those guys, like I mentioned, he's very fucking opinionated. If he likes something, he's going to tell you he likes it. And here's a list of 50 reasons why he likes it. Now, if he doesn't like it, he's kind of like us. He's blunt to the point and direct. He will tell you, I don't like this. And here's 200 reasons why I don't like it. And he will go through a pie chart, you know, all kinds of shit just to get his point across. And sometimes I've watched some of his videos where he's ranted about something and it was something that I actually enjoyed and he hated. And at the end of it, I was kind of like, huh, maybe, maybe I am wrong. Maybe this movie does suck. You know, it, it, he's that good about it. So I had high expectations for this one because if he were to put out just a complete piece of fan film trash, his credibility would just be gone. And I knew, A, he's connected to the right people because of his job as a voice actor. He knows that connection. He knows that world. He was not going to waste an opportunity to do something like this and put out a piece of shit. He did not. He delivered. 
I wouldn't say he surpassed my expectations, but he absolutely met them. His cast alone, one of the main things I say about almost every fucking fan film we watch is the goddamn acting. Other fan filmmakers, pay attention to this. They are, A, not his best friends, not the guy you think is funny at the local bar that you go and hang out with and sing karaoke. They're, they're not your relatives. They're not some chick you want to fuck. He hired actors, and that's the main thing. Now, get this also. You don't have to necessarily hire actors, but find good actors for your shit. That is the most important part. Victoria Merrow plays Sam, who is Jess Bradford's granddaughter from the original Jess Bradford from the original 1974 Black Christmas. And A, she looks pretty similar to Olivia Hussey. She nails the character. Her two supporting actresses are fantastic. It's 42 minutes. I think there's probably another 40 to 45 minute film in mind if they get enough traction from this one to continue this story. I don't want to get into it too much yet. We will, but I want to save that for later. Billy in 74, pretty schizophrenic, multiple voices, had something going on in his head that made him nuts. Where the hell has he been for 50 years? Has he just been hovering in that fucking attic for 50 years? Or did he move in after Jess Bradford died? Something tells me, I don't think he's been in the attic for 50 years, but obviously he's had a caretaker, spoiler alert there, that might have been taking care of him. But, I mean, he was definitely in the house before she died. Because even I was thinking about that when I was watching the movie. It's like, how long has he been in this fucking attic? So he had time to set up a pretty nice fucking bachelor pad. It was bare minimum. That's all he needs. I mean, he had the fucking Christmas lights to set the fucking mood. He had his own fucking dial phone. He had a fucking chair. I, he was living the fucking high life. He was living the life of a divorced dad that just got kicked out of his house after, you know, 20 but years. For Billy, that's fucking, dude, he's, no, he's drinking a fucking Miller, man. You little bitch! <laughs> what did you do? Ziggy, same question to you, but on top of that, was he waiting for Sam? Did he know about Sam, or was he just hanging out in the house, and then Sam shows up, and he's like, oh, sweet, fresh meat? No, 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 and due to what we find out near the end of the movie in the final act, that all matters to what you're asking. Yes, he had help. I think whenever the arrangements were made to go to Grandma's house, I think that's when Billy was brought there. I think, yeah, I think along that same lines, too. I think once Billy and his accomplice, we'll just call it that for now, take care of Jess, who is obviously 50 years older, probably in her mid-70s or early 70s by now, easier to take care of than she was in 1974 for, this, for the purposes of this film. Once they take her, then Billy just kind of moves in and is just like, hey, I got a new place to hang out, you know? He may not live there, but he's hangs out there just to kind of remember how he finally got Jess. That's kind of what I drew from it. Yesterday, I rewatched, I hadn't seen it in many, many years, but I rewatched the 2006 Black Christmas. You said we weren't going to bring this up. I am going to bring it up. But for one point alone, I don't think this was intentional, and I definitely don't think it was like an homage to the film, but the look of Billy is very reminiscent of the look of the antagonist mm. in the 2006 film. Did you notice that, or did you catch that similarity? I just kind of let it go, but somebody else pointed that out on Dave's page. Oh, and he, okay. He came right out and said, just a coincidence, because we did nothing to tribute either one of the other films. Straight from the horse's mouth. Colonel, did, did you happen to catch that connection at all, or that look? I'll be completely honest with you, I did not because I've not seen Black Christmas 2006 since Christmas Day 2006. <laughs> like, I was one and done. That was enough for me. Colonel, I know I talked about it a little bit, and I, you even mentioned it a, a little bit too, but did you, you enjoy the acting in this? Did you like the cohesive quality? 
personally for me, I believe these three were friends, were best friends from frame one of this film. Did you feel that way as well? And talk a little bit about the acting of the three. Oh, definitely. And, and that's, that's the key word here, especially if people make fan films. It was acting. I mean, if you're a good actor, I'm not aware of the fact you're acting. I'm, you know, thinking I'm watching actual people living their fucking lives. That's why we watch the movies. It was so refreshing. They were so good. And so, like, the, the actress that played Emma, along with the actress that played Sam, I really felt like they were lifelong friends. Like, oh, I loved your grandma, but this house always kind of scared me. It just, it's so refreshing in a fan film to get that. That's, that's all I got to say. It wasn't fucking, like Crank always says, the funny guy down at the fucking bar. Uh, the hot chick working at the 7-Eleven you want to you know, get wet with or stick it in, however you want to put it. Hot dog through a donut, whatever. It was nice to see actual actors. Uh, yeah. It's hard to believe I have to say that, but we all know how these fan films are. And then what's great about this is he proved the point. You don't need a lot of money to hire good people. Yeah, this film was made for $60,000, Canadian dollars at that. I don't know if that's lower or higher than the U.S. I, I really don't know. Again, like you just said, Colonel, proof that you don't need a shit ton of money to be able to hire some people. And they, they also shot this in a week. The voice of Billy portrayed by Dave McRae in this. What did you think of that and the overall sound design of this film? Well, obviously the man, that's his game. So right. fuck, man. That was really probably the most disturbing aspects of this movie were his calls and the fucking voice. He lets it go, man. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's there. It's fucking just as crazy goosebump causing as it was back in 74. It's just as disturbing. And he, I, I think he added another wave to it, man, and made it even more. So 50 years, this motherfucker's that much more crazy. And yeah. it's great. It, it works. Oh, I definitely agree. He did. An amazing job doing this, as he should. I mean, he's a voice actor. But I was very aware of the fact, just listening, that i got to get this reference in before they're off the shelves. Uh, Billy is a few ports short of a full pack, if you know what I'm saying. All right. We got to get into spoilers a little bit here. This is one of those times that I will highly recommend. If you haven't seen this, stop watching us right now. Go watch this 42-minute film. Come back and, and check this out. I almost hate to say this, but... I think it was S. Michael that brought this up during our live interview with Dave last week. He brought it up and Dave dodged the question like, <laughs> will we get to see who Agnes is or will we get to see Agnes in this? I can't remember even exactly how he asked, but we do. Agnes makes an appearance and this bitch is helping Billy out. Colonel, did you like that? That, that was probably the furthest reach out of this film that they could have done that and but I liked it. What about you? Uh, I would disagree. I would say there's one further reach. One more, that, but I won't mention it because we're not talking about it yet. Yet, mm. but yes, I was like, oh sure, you know, and especially the reveal. And then, of course, I got to say this: this part was fucking awesome. When somehow this blanket in the back of this fucking station wagon falls down, it's Emma and the fucking plastic. I'm like, oh, yeah. like there might have been a million other Easter eggs I just missed. <laughs> that one. I was like, yes, got it. Well, and I also love the way Agnes, she calls herself something else in the beginning of the film when she meets the girls. She's a sweet old lady. She's giving them the keys to the house. She she knew the grandmother. She, oh, Sam, I've heard so much about you. I'm glad you're here. Blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna miss, gonna miss having the Bradfords here at the Brown this area, you know, all this bullshit. And then she switches in the third act and she's like, Bella, get your fucking ass down here, you know. <laughs> I'm like, yes, a woman with some balls. I like it. Ziggy, what do you think of that reveal and that twist? Oh, yeah, that's one of those mm -hmm. moments, you know. But, uh, yeah, there she is, and clearly she's pulling the strings for crazy old Billy and helping him out. Kind of reminiscent of, I almost felt like Texas Chainsaw in a bit, like the family kind of dynamic. These guys weren't afraid to take some liberties with the material, but this shit paid off. It actually fucking works. We have no backstory on this fucking woman other than now we know she's Agnes. And how deep does her fucking storyline roll in this whole thing? That's why we need another entry, Mr. McRae. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. I thought it was a reach. And yes, Colonel's right. There is another thing that we're going to spoil here in a minute that was also kind of a reach. But I believe it. I think it's believable. I think it's possible mm. in this world. 
The inclusion of Agnes brings up another question. Was Agnes helping in 1974 at all? All fingers point to yes. I mean, she had to have. I mean, how else would she and Billy be so close now, 50-something years later, this crazy son of a bitch? You really think he trusts people? No. They've been cahoots for a while. Maybe a brother-sister type deal. Who knows? God, yes. A hundred percent. I mean, how could it not? There's a whole other movie right there telling what the fuck connecting her to this whole thing. This thing is alive again, man, and it's glorious. It's beautiful. The last thing I want to bring up is the actual ending. And so far from what I've seen online, Dave's fans have loved this. Some Black Christmas fans have also liked this ending. I'll tell you what it is here in a minute, and then we'll really dive in. But I have a feeling there are going to be some people that are just like, oh, come on. This is a little, it's a little hokey. I don't, I don't, I don't buy this for a minute. I think there's going to be a handful of people out there like that. Ziggy, do you see that yet? Or what do you, what did you think of the ending before we talk more about it? Well, holy cliffhangers, Batman. (laughs) I mean, you know what I mean? That's why I was like, Dave, you bastard. That ending. What capacity is that going to be in? So many questions coming when you walk out of this movie. That you can't stop thinking about it. Just like Agnes, I'm like, well, what the fuck? What have you been doing for 50 years that you were ready for this? I Well, to answer that question, I think they've been looking for Jess. They didn't necessarily know where she was. And when they finally found her, they were like, you know what? We're going to play the kindly old neighbors next door, get to know her real well, and then come in and take care of business. It was kind of one of those hokey, come on, you can do better moments. That's not to say I hated it, because oddly enough, like Crank said, it worked for this. I was able to overlook it a little bit. It's a great cliffhanger once you get over it and you really just digest it for what it is. Take it for what it is. Don't overthink it. And it's like, ooh, okay, we're on to something here. And especially the sound effects used, I want to see. I want to see more. But yes, it's a little fucking hokey. And again, that's just a minor fucking complaint. So the ending is Sam is abducted by Agnes and Billy at her grandmother's house. She is taken somewhere else, presumably a basement, a dungeon kind of thing, and thrown into a room by Billy. The door is locked behind her. She's banging to get out, and then she hears something behind her. She turns around, faces the camera, and is like, Grandma, cut to black, roll credits. So grandmother, Jess, is in the fucking basement. Holy shit. Obviously, Dave has plans for a th- another movie. I-, I almost said third movie because <laughs> I'm already putting this into the actual Black Christmas pipeline. Obviously, Dave has plans for a second It's Me, Billy of some sorts. What do you want to see from that, Colonel? Before I get that far, I just want to say this. That's why I thought it was fucking hokey. Again, once I really think about it and how it fits. Okay, we got the sequel going, which I will talk about in a second. Mm-hmm. But beginning of the film. Grandma's dead. Grandma's daughter's dead. Sam's the only one left. So I was ahead of fucking funeral. Did they? If she's dead, they had a fucking funeral. Unless she went missing and just uh, gave up. Let me dive into this for a second because I have a theory about that. Who contacted Sam or Sam's father, the family, and told them that Jess was dead? Could have been the police. She could have been found dead. Or could have been Agnes. There you go. I, I, I'm just saying still, though, I mean, I'm not going to assume somebody's dead if I can't find a fucking body. If I didn't bury a fucking body, you're not 100% dead. I mean, so again, that's where I thought it was a little hokey. Like, okay, come on. This is where it's going to get really stupid. But this is kind of like they're kind of collecting these family members. I have a feeling there's one more we don't know about that might be a whole new character for this universe. Like a brother? Could be a brother or another sister. I really hope it was another sister. Like Maybe Sam had a fucking twin. I know that's so fucking stupid, but it's now you're getting hope. why else would Billy and Agnes keep them alive? There's no reason to. And like I said, it's like they're fucking collecting them. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they're keeping them alive, but Ziggy, what, what would you like to see in the next installment of this if and when we get it? Well, obviously, you know, you, you want to see Grandma help get them out of there, escape, maybe destroy Billy and Agnes. To me, it's dangerously getting close to like the Halloween 2018 dynamic where you have Lori come back and you have the three generations of girls there. Maybe the hidden character is the daughter in the Black Christmas. I would hope not. Speculating, obviously, but there's a million ways to go. But obviously we want to see Sam survive and, you know, maybe bust out of there with grandma. I think that's the most natural answer we can give on it. 
right away I'm all like went over to Olivia Hussey's page just to see if there was anything there, like, you know, announced maybe she's appearing or something. So Ziggy, how kick ass would it be if Olivia Hussey was able to come back and be in the next installment of It's Me Billy to reprise a role of Jess Bradford? Look, man, as far as the fan films are going like that, we're looking at another one, Roseblood, that has Lara Park Lincoln coming back to it. We've already had Tom Matthews come back. They can nail that one. Fuck, man. That'll just make an already great product even that much fucking better. So, yeah, I'm all for it, man. Do it. I agree completely. It'd be fucking badass. Because, I mean, I'm a little dark here. I, mean, I don't know, but it's not like there's a whole lot of people, original cast members for the original film they could bring back. So, please bring her back while we got the chance, hopefully. Because I think that'd be great to see a character interaction with the granddaughter and everything. I think it'd be really cool. I think it'd be sweet if they were able to kick his ass together somehow. You know, granted, she, she's older. She may not be able to move as much, but I bet she's got some spirit still left in her. Before we get to the ranking, I'm going to ask you guys one more thing, and I'm going to explain why. I finally realized why I hate most fan films so much. And I realized this just the other day. Did you know the first fan film I ever really saw was Never Hike Alone? So the bar for me was set so fucking high. And then I saw all the other ones that came out. And so, here, let me pick this one up from down here. Huh. Don't, don't want to talk about that one. The bar was set so fucking high for me. And that's why I've had a hard time on fan films. I'm going to try to reframe my thinking about that a little bit and be slightly kinder. I'm still going to be honest, but I'm going to be slightly kinder on some of these fan films in the future. But my question to you guys is, Colonel, you put Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow slightly ahead of Black Christmas, in your opinion? Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's just uh, just slightly. It's literally because of my fandom. They're both great quality products. Now, I, I know we're harsh on fan films. Do you want to be kinder? To me, I don't think you need to. Never I Can Just Know was not my first fan film I've seen. Uh, I'm a big fan of, I'm sure Zag probably knows about these, where you take, like, say, Scorpion and Batman, and they battle. I love that shit. It's nerdy as fuck, but I love it. Look, guess, dude, the quality's good. The costumes look good. The acting's not terrible. There's a bar you can reach. That's what I just don't get. It's very obtainable. Now, some fan, some fan films, yes. I mean, they're going to be bad. Because let's be honest, they're, they're kids out in their fucking backyard walking around the woods. Okay, I get that. I'm still going to shit on it, but I get it. <laughs> That's why these guys are so high, because there's a bar you can reach. Now, they have connections in the industry that give them an advantage over other people. I understand that as well. But well, you can rent this equipment. Hell, we got a great panel on our YouTube channel where they tell you how to get this equipment and really not pay a dime for it. <laughs> so there's ways to do this. Okay. Not only not only did they hire proper actors for this, and the cast and the crew was fairly small, but not only did they hire actors for this, they hired a, a DP, a director of photography, to come in and set all these beautiful, gorgeous shots up. They didn't try to do it with their handheld camcorder or their fucking iPhone. So that was another big step. They had a $60,000 budget to do that with. But a lot of these fan films that are coming out and the ones that I've had issues with, the main thing I have issues with about fan films are the acting, the looks of the film. And then the fact that the fans of the fan films, like, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Look, Guys, we haven't had a, a proper Friday the 13th film since 2009. I know you guys are desperate to see Jason again, but some of these things that are coming out are trash. Admit it. Just because you have a funny character, what you think is a funny character, and everyone else is just kind of like, this guy's fucking stupid, I hope he dies, doesn't make it good. That's my problem with a lot of the fan films. They're not all great. Never hike alone, never hike in the snow. Excellent pieces of work. This, It's Me, Billy, also excellent piece of work. Ziggy, which one do you rank higher? It's Me, Billy can stand right with both of Vincent's movies, Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow. It, it, the quality's there. It deserves to stand with those films. This was something where the standard was there. These look just as good as anything in the theater. And yeah, we've seen a lot of fan films. we got to watch almost all of them that come across our desk. And there's a lot of bad ones. <laughs> the problem that I've seen is we've gone over acting. A lot of these films hang these heavy plots and put it on these non-professional actors, and they can't deliver the material in a way that's believable. 
We don't have that here. Or with Vincent's films either, obviously. Never Hike Alone. Those things are fucking gorgeous. And at least now we can get involved too and help with crowdfunding. If it does come to that for another It's Me, Billy sequel, I'm all for it. And yes, this is, as far as fan films go, stands right in there. Top three with those other two we mentioned. Yeah, I already told Dave, sign us up as uh, associate producers for the next one. Ziggy, you dodged my question. Which one do you like better? Yeah, I'm asking. Which one do you like better? It's Me, Billy? Or never hike alone and never hike in the snow. Not a really fair question. I know. Uh, That's why I asked them. I was really blown away by never hike alone with what they pulled off with there. So I'm going to give it to them by a hair. But it's me, Billy, is I'll, I'll say number two. We'll put it in a head over never hike in the snow. Right there. They're all right there. It's like. All right. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Rose Blood because I know we'll get to see that in the, the fall. But I'm pretty sure I have already seen at least my choice, my pick for top fan film of 2021. I, I want to find something I don't like about this movie, but it's hard to. The, the worst things I can think about saying are some of their story choices that they chose to make were almost outlandish reaches. But... They work, and I can't, I can't find anything bad. I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan. I grew up on those films, but I'm still, I'm going to nudge It's Me, Billy, slightly ahead of Never Hike Alone. And I'm sorry, Vincent. Uh, it's no, 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 you're no slouch either. Don't get me wrong. I love your films as well, but please don't release one this year because I don't want to have to pick between one and two Release it in 2022. We'll be good, Vincent. That's all, I, that's all I ask. I don't ask for much. From what I've seen, he's been very vocal on It's Me, Billy, and he's oh, he probably put it ahead of his own movies. That's the kind of guy he is. That is the kind of guy he is. A rating. Colonel, let's give this one a number. This is difficult because, like I said, it is a fan film. I wouldn't say hurts it like it does some of these other ones because it's really fucking good. It comes down to runtime at this point, trying to figure out how to justify how to rate it. Yeah. This is tough because I don't want to rate it too high, but I don't want to rate it too low. Dude, I'm still going to give it a solid seven and a half. It was just really fucking good. And like I said, this is coming from a non-black Christmas fan. This is That's really what I was getting ready good. to say. That's what I was getting ready to say is, and this is a guy that did not like black Christmas. <laughs> Very simple, really. I mean, and I, I rate fan films. I don't stand them next to the big Hollywood productions like that and all those rankings. In my mind, I have a database going on what I've been scoring things. Mm-hmm. So I know what's going on. But fan films, totally different monster, beast. I was entertained by this movie, flat out. Even with the reaches and choices they made, they made them work. And I just want to know, and all stands aside on what they ever take it, what they do with it. Maybe I'll come back and adjust that score if they make a third one and it's not as cool or good. Mm-hmm. I don't see how that's possible. This is a fucking great watch. You need to see it as a horror fan. And ZigZag's giving it an eight, man. See, you actually just said something that is making me question something else. When we do do our rankings at the end of the year or the beginning of next year of our top fan films, this one's obviously going to be close to the top, if not at the top of probably all of our list. Would it be wrong to include this in just the top five or top ten films of 2021 at the same time? Hmm. I don't think that's against the rules. We can do what we want. We can add a fan film in our top rankings, sure. Okay. If you were entertained and it made that much of an impact on you, why the fuck wouldn't you put it on your master list? Maybe this year we might make an exception. I mean, I don't have a problem with it because let's take It's Me, Billy, which is up here. Then let's take a full-length film that we recently watched, The Resort, which is down here. It's Me, Billy deserves all the fucking praise. The Resort is an example of going through the motions of filmmaking, and there's no passion there. Zero. Um, This fan film... At this top of this list, complete opposite. Love, passion, the history of it all, all comes through on this. It's fucking obvious, and it earns any kind of good score that we're giving it. And and respect. Dude. Respect for the source material. And even when they did it, even when they made their choices to do what they did, it was still cool. It didn't ruin it. It didn't ruin Black fucking Christmas. It's still fucking cool, and I still want to know where the fuck we're going. How's that? I'm still invested. I was just curious about that because I I don't know, but based on what we've seen so far and the number I'm about to throw on It's Me, Billy, 
it's probably going to make it into my top five or top, at least top 10 of everything this year. The acting, like I've already talked about, the shots are beautiful. The direction is just incredible. There's not many negatives about this for me. And I'm not the biggest Black Christmas fan. I actually think I like It's Me, Billy better than I do Black Christmas. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm being completely honest. I will also say this. It's Me, Billy makes me appreciate Black Christmas even more. That is a true statement. Absolutely, man. Because if Bob Clark was still around and had had an opportunity at some point to have made a sequel to Black Christmas while he was still with us, I think this is a proper path for that story to take. Even Like I say, if, if he was still around and he happened to cross this on the interwebs, he would watch this and I, I guarantee he would send Dave and Bruce a message and be like, God damn, guys, this is beautiful. Uh, I really like what you did here. This is great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think he would have reached out. In regards to your letter, though, it'd probably be like, you know, all the love and best, Bob Clark. P.S. Next time, say cunt more. Yes. But yeah, as far as a number on this one, I've got to give this an eight and a half. The only thing I think would make people not like this movie is if they just either hate Black Christmas or they hate Dave McRae because of what he does on YouTube. If, if you don't like Black Christmas, clearly you're not going to like this. True. No, I mean, if you can, no, if you can watch, if you're interested in seeing someone masterfully create a piece of material film-wise with proper sound design, lighting, all that good shit, techniques, you might get into it that way. But if you're not a fan of Black Christmas, you're not going to like this. I disagree with you. I'm not a fan of Black Christmas. I found it like, to this day. I, like, I watched it three or four times. You're fringe. You're a fringe yeah. man, though. I mean, that's different. There's people go, fuck Black Christmas. That is a shit movie, a piece of shit, waste of time. No way. It's not, though. It's I wouldn't say all that. Right. And that's why I'm saying I hear what you're saying, but you're kind of, you still would watch it and come out of it going, huh, you know, have some things to say. You know, I mean, I think people that are against Black Christmas all the way. There's no way to save it. They can't come in here when it, everything that Dave does in his movie is all hinged on what happened in 74. So, I mean. I get it. Yeah, and, you know, it might just be over people's heads. Go watch this film. It's available on YouTube and Vimeo. If you watch it on a big screen, please connect Vimeo to that because it does make it a little bit of a difference and it pays off in the end. And let us know what you thought about it in the comments. Dave, Bruce, excellent work. Like I said in my email to you, just tell us what we owe you because we're already attached to whatever sequel you've got coming down the pike for this. We want to be involved. I, I can't wait to see what else you've got up your goddamn creative motherfucking sleeves, you Canadian cocksuckers. No, I'm just kidding. So it was calling cocksuckers. What was that all about? <laughs> what are you doing? No, 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 no. Don't start that shit either. We got, we got to play nice here. That's it for stories around the campfire. We'll be back. Woo! Well, break me out another Yuletide log because that story around the campfire is done. It's me, Billy. Make sure you see it, but stay right there, man. We've got more great stuff coming at you real soon. Excuse me, sir. Someone's in here. Hello, how's it going? I'm Rian Reese, and uh, you are watching Death Curse Society.
moving on up, moving on up to the east side, to the east side. So, to a deep <laughs> apartment in the sky. We're moving on up, We're moving on up to the east side. We're moving on up. We finally got a piece of the pie. Poom pang. Sorry. What? <laughs> I'm coming from the member of the DCS that's never seen an episode of Jefferson, probably. I have seen an episode of Jefferson. <laughs> okay. okay. I know enough to know the theme song. Okay. They called everybody honkies. That was funny. Yep. Lots of honkies. I would not be offended if anybody ever called me a honky. I would laugh. I'm like, ah, cool. I it's funny. <laughs> Keep on walking. Cracker as well. It's like, yep, good one. Thanks. <laughs> they call me a cracker. Just keep what walking. up? It's the Colonel Death Curse Society. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I push the numbers on my computer. The computer don't lie. If you don't subscribe and watch more videos, you may be a dead fuck. So be sure to click over here for more videos from Death Curse Society.